Well, greetings, church. Thanks for joining us today on this Wednesday Seeds segment. And uh, just thankful for the opportunity to come to you again via live stream. Amen. God is so good. Uh, it is our, our week of prayer and fasting. And uh, we invite all of you, each of you, to just continue to join with us this week in a time of consecration and spending some time with the Lord. Uh, we are reading from the book of Lamentations uh, here in the month of October. And so I would encourage you just to uh, incorporate a man reading of his word as well. Of course, uh, the book of Lamentations is a poetic book of laments. Most uh, believe that it was Jeremiah that uh, penned uh, these words after the destruction of Jerusalem uh, in 500 BC, 570 BC, thereabouts. And so he's lamenting uh, the loss of Jerusalem, uh, but it is a very interesting read, a time of grief and sorrow, of heaviness. Uh, I want to just give you maybe some updates of what's going on. Uh, of course, we have sort of dialed back uh, this last week and this week coming, taking sort of a two-week uh, interval here to try to give some reprieve uh, to, to COVID-19. Uh, we've had a little bit of outbreak here in our local church with about 20 cases thus far. I'm happy to announce that um, no one has uh, been hospitalized. We've It's been pretty mild uh, uh, symptoms. Uh, some people pretty sick for a day or two and then getting over it. Most that's been communicated to us has been uh, flu-like symptoms. And so uh, we thank God for that, that he's kept us in this time of disease and sickness. It does rain on the just and the unjust. We're not exempt uh, as a church and as his bride. Uh, we're not exempt from sickness or going through things that come upon the earth, but God is with us and we trust him in that. I will say thank you for all the, the concern, prayers, and gifts. Uh, just uh, you reaching out to us uh, and our, as our family was inundated with COVID and uh, had a couple positive tests in our household and Pretty much all of us had the symptoms of the sickness, uh, but we're all uh, recovered and out of quarantine and doing well, and I thank God for that. I want to say work continues on the church on our uh, reconstruction after the storm. It's been a little bit of a delay with ordering the materials, but the contractors are assuring me that uh, in the next couple of weeks, the steel will be delivered uh, for the fabrication of the front and that the uh, church steeple, the new church steeple has been ordered. And so we're looking forward to getting uh, our property uh, back in tip top shape, amen, before the weather changes here. So we're excited about that. Harvest has again uh, turned back the dial a bit uh, to do our best to uh, mitigate risk for our, our members. And uh, but most everybody is recovering or uh, is in is even out of quarantine this, this week. And so uh, we had online services last week and continue to do so this coming Sunday. But our goal is to be back at church uh, on October the 18th. And we're already looking forward to that, uh, having you back in service. And we're even just anticipating a great time on property. Again, October the 18th at 10 a.m., we will be back in church. We're, we're excited to get back in church with all of you. We've been missing you um, terribly. And it would be good to be back in service. Quarantine, I think, is probably the worst part as far as our family's experience uh, of this COVID experience. Amen. Quarantine is the worst part. Uh, it's been a little different, uh, trying season, I would say, for, for all of us. Uh, but I am happy to announce that God is on the throne uh, and the church is alive and at work in the world today. Just talked to Brother uh, Pablo Vicente yesterday in Guatemala. Uh, they have some very uh, hard restrictions, uh, heavy fines if they're not wearing masks in public, different things like that, social distancing uh, being policed very heavily, but they are able to uh, be back in church together. and uh, They're having baptisms and things are going in a uh, positive direction. Very excited about that. Uh, the Perrys at the Lake of the Ozarks are doing well, Osage Beach. Uh, it's been a little bit of a setback. They were getting ready to expand uh, their property there with some rental of some more space. Uh, but with this uh, uh, pandemic, things have just sort of been on 
pushed on pause, but they're excited to get back, amen, to uh, moving forward in the work there at Osage Beach, amen. And so I'm excited about what God's doing. Those are just a, a couple of cases here in the section. Most all of our churches are, are doing well and some good reports uh, coming out of the churches across our, our section and even uh, around our state, amen. So someone asked me the other day if this was perhaps God's way uh, of separating uh, the tares from the wheat or uh, the sheep from the goats that you can read in Christ's gospel in Matthew uh, the 13th chapter and also Matthew 25. Um, I don't know if anyone could say that for sure, but it does seem, it does seem that uh, there is a valuation of priorities being cast. Uh, we are finding out where our, our faith stands and the things that uh, we're committed to and uh, consecrated to in these times. And so uh, our prayers are with you. I know that uh, I'm sure you're praying for us, but we're praying for you. I love these, these uh, cool fall mornings and evenings the other day. And I just want to share a few of my thoughts today, but uh, I uh, rose pretty early, was out as the sun was coming up. And uh, I was reminded of a passage of scripture as I seen the beautiful array of all of God's creation. There was a light breeze that was blowing and I just seen some of the things that has been common all of my lifespan that was consistent from all of my days and the, the, the common denominators of that morning uh, set. The, 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 the streets were quiet and again, the sun was rising and the cool breeze was blowing. It seems like there was some some birds making some noise. But I, I remembered the passage uh, in Genesis 8.22, and I want to share that with you. It says, while the earth remaineth, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Now that's a promise from God's word that uh, began in the Genesis, and here we are in 2020, and we still see continuing today. Uh, again, the earth remaineth, as the earth remaineth, there's going to be this. There's going to be seed time and harvest. There's going to be cold and heat. There's going to be summer and winter, and there will be day and night. That's what God's word promises us, and you take that word and you set it alongside scriptures such as uh, the words of the Lord in the Gospels where he says that all of heaven, all the heavens shall be shaken. Uh, that's Luke 21, 26. And then the words of Paul, like in Hebrews 12, uh, verse 27, this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of the things that are made, that those can those things that cannot be shaken may remain. And he goes on to say, wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. I take confidence in that today. But he says, we receive this kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And as I was sort of just uh, enjoying the morning, a cool breeze was hitting me in the face. The sun was uh, raising, rising again, amen. Uh, I, I, I began to consider these, these words and meditate on his word. And it is a time of shaking. There are a lot of things that are in movement, uh, but there are those things that, that remain, uh, which cannot be shaken, which cannot be moved. And as we've been looking at the scripture, Paul said, for whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort. It's Romans 15 and four. We shared it uh, last weekend and it's really been on my heart, uh, that passage. These things that were written aforetime were there written. Of course, he's alluding to the word of God. It was written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. And so looking at the old and looking at the new and, and our present experience, Again, in the context of that morning, uh, just uh, interlude where the Lord was talking to my heart, we see these constants. Um, and I, I would encourage all of us to consider 
and commit ourselves to that which, which doesn't move, that which remains. With all the frustration, with all the motion, the change, uh, pandemic and politics, uh, just everything that seems to have just had some normality is no longer normal or common anymore. But as the sun was coming up, I thought of those men and women that we read of in the scripture that seen, seen that same sun arise, uh, trees blowing in the fresh morning breeze, amen, the clouds moving across the landscape. Uh, I will confess, and we all realize that our modern culture is much different than the ages before us. Uh, we're faced with new challenges, uh, different worldviews and uh, perspectives. But as the sun remains and the moon and the stars, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, there is that which remains. And that was really just, I was impacted that morning as I was just, again, meditating and contemplating the things of God. And I was thankful. I was comforted. I find hope, amen, uh, in these things that remain. And of course, the scripture shares many things. That was really the context of looking uh, even to the Old Testament, New Testament of things that are consistent in God. Uh, we, we've preached on that, talked about that the last couple of weeks. But there were three things that morning that just really I began to consider. Of course, it's a week of prayer and fasting. Uh, this week, we do this, amen, uh, throughout the year and uh, try to at least do it quarterly, uh, but a week of prayer and fasting. And as I was just talking to the Lord, that, that there was that uh, understanding that came to me just as the sun would arise and the wind would blow through the trees. Uh, in this day, that's, there's a lot of motion. Uh, man can still communicate with God. That's something that remains. Uh, there is a lot of shaking going on, but that which, which uh, can remain and shall remain, and that one of those things is that a man can communicate with his God. Prayer is an old and ancient practice, and it remains for those that will take time to facilitate, uh, to facilitate it, to be blessed by it. Uh, prayer still changes things. And I took solace in that fact that it's, a, it's an ancient business, but it remains. Uh, a man can still commune with God and God is still communing with man. Uh, something else that, uh, and, I, and I'm gonna just share these and maybe come back and uh, look over them again, but something else that stood out to me that morning, amen, just as constant as the sun is arising in the morning and as constant as the, the, a breeze blowing a man across your face is God's word. God's word will never fade. It remains. It's forever settled. Amen. It has not become too antiquated or has not lost its eternal value uh, like the morning sun. Amen. Oh, I take hope and comfort in that. His word remains. Earthly kingdoms have risen and have fallen. Uh, I begin to thank dictators and and monarchs and kings and presidents have come and gone, amen. But all the time, the word of God is there. The word of God has been constant, amen. As a manual to be cherished and, and followed or as a book despised and disregarded, all the same, it's there. Then there's one more thing that just that morning I was impressed to, to consider. Uh, first of all, uh, just taking confidence in those things that remain. It was communion with God. It was his word and then his church. Uh, I am so thankful that God has established his church in this world, upon this earth, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against. I feel uh, the energy and the strength, even today, of, of that body, of that living organism that's in the world today, uh, whether it be a phone call and you connecting with somebody or somebody just simply saying, I've been praying for you, uh, you sense it, not only when it's verbalized, but even in the spirit uh, that there is something living in the world today that is much more powerful 
that all of these things uh, that are in motion, that are changing, uh, that would frustrate us. The church, God's body lives on. Uh, there's a day coming when what we know as the church will be transformed. Oh, hear me today. We'll be transformed into a new era of living and glorified existence. Uh, it will no longer be so much seen as a, a location, uh, you know, a property, a place where we frequent, or even a denomination, uh, a place I go on Sunday. But it will be more realized as his body and that which makes up his kingdom. But my point is uh, his, his church, his church will remain. The gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. We need to realize today and just sharing these three components that uh, again, as I seen the sun and uh, felt the breeze, and I thought, man, that's, that's been happening for a long time. That's something that just remains, you know, summer and heat, day and night. And uh, uh, the winter and the cold, these things have just continued uh, throughout the millennials, uh, the millenniums. But uh, as I began to consider that and I began to think of these other things that are constant, that I can tie myself to prayer, amen, his word and the church, I need to realize this. I need to realize that man's awareness, acceptance or approval has no authority or power over these things. Whether I participate, whether I acknowledge, amen, prayer, his word, or his church, whether I'm a part of it, whether it's a part of my life, it makes no difference. It still remains. It's still there to, to reckon with. As a man could not stop the stars from shining uh, or the moon from eliminating the, uh, the dark shadows of the night, Neither does our preference or suggestion have any influence over any of these. And while things that can be shaken are being shaken, ladies and gentlemen and church family, I just come to announce today there is that which remains. And uh, that's what I want to tie my heart to. Uh, that's what I want to focus on in times like these. It's in these things that I think that are good to consider uh, when we are faced with days like these. It gives comfort in knowing uh, prayer still is available. Uh, a man can talk to God today and a man can hear the voice of the Lord. Prayer still works, amen. And, and men ought always, Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not faint. Uh, so thank you this week in advance for taking time to get along with God. Thank you, amen, for participating in corporate prayer, whether that be ladies' prayer time or men's prayer. We've continued that uh, throughout the duration. There was a little time that we took off uh, when uh, back in March, uh, but we really have felt led that uh, we can continue and pray. Men, men are always to pray and not faint. And uh, so we've continued that even as we've tried in other ways to mitigate risk. Uh, we really believe that his house should be called a house of prayer. And so I wanna encourage you, I wanna invite you to participate in those times. Uh, we can much easily easier uh, social distance and uh, take care of things that need to be taken care of as far as the practicality of coming together and uh, yet mitigating risk. But uh, we, we invite you to come and participate with us in corporate prayer, times of prayer. So Saturday morning, of course, men's prayer, uh, that's still on. And so, man, I want to encourage you, come and participate, be a part. Uh, it's, it's an ancient practice, an ancient discipline. Uh, but it's constant uh, as the sun coming up. Uh, there are men turning their hearts toward God. And I promise you, uh, God desires to commune with us. And so, amen. I I'm thankful that prayer is available to us. And hope, hope is seen uh, in that living organism we call his church that was born in the fire. Amen. I believe we'll still thrive in the fire and continue to grow and expand uh, even when things all around it are shaking. Amen. The church is a living organism that will go on. And I want to be a part of that. Amen. And that forever settled word of God. Oh, thank God for his word today. But that forever settled word of God uh, will outlast the elements that are constant today 
I, I, I just felt to say this. I believe the word of God is more dependable and assured uh, than a tide that comes in or goes out uh, on a sandy shore. Uh, the word of God is forever settled. When heaven and earth shall pass away, hallelujah, uh, his word uh, will still stand, amen. And, and that unchanging word was written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. And so like the sun rising and the cool breeze blowing, uh, and maybe I would invite you to get up early uh, one day this week and uh, maybe uh, just shift your alarm clock back an hour and just say, hey, I want to get up and go outside in the solitude of just the early morning and see those things that are constant, those things that have never changed from the Genesis and uh, realize it and then meditate upon that and then understand not just the elements of nature, uh, but there's some other things that are part of his kingdom like prayer and like his word, and like the church that remain. Even though there is a lot of change, there is that that has staying power and has keeping power for us, that comforts and gives us hope, amen. And so like the coming of winter and then again summer, there's things that have been since time began here on the earth. And I would introduce you and maybe just remind you of some of those spiritual things as well. And so I point us to these three things that remain, prayer, his word, and the church. And uh, these are a piece, or pieces, I guess I could say, of the components that make up the kingdom of God. And, and again, in Hebrews 12, Paul said, wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and, and godly fear. Amen, amen. So I invite you, amen, to participate, amen, in some of these things that we would, amen, focus on today. Consider them, amen. 2020 might be considered the year where many things that used to be normal and, and common uh, have been forfeited or have been lost uh, with this world crisis. Some speculate that uh, our world might never go back or get back to what we would call uh, normalcy. Uh, our places of employment have uh, have changed the most part and how we socialize has changed. Uh, uh, the, the medicinal field has, has been transformed with new new policy and practices. The, uh, the scholastic uh, environment has been uh, majorly affected, at least that's what uh, my daughter tells me, amen. Entertainment we know has, has changed. Uh, the way we do church is, has, has shifted for sure. Much has changed in a very short amount of time. Uh, will it get back to normal? That's a question many have asked. Well, I, I don't really know. Uh, will we ever hug necks and fellowship and break bread that was common less than 250 days ago? Who can say? Uh, I don't really know. I can't prophesy. But here's what I do know. As the sun rises every morning, and as the moon rules the night as it has done since the genesis of time, as we know it upon the earth, as there is cold and heat in summer and winter and day and night, as a, a cool breeze can still blow and a man across the field and cool you from a day's labor, uh, there is that which we, which we can reflect and realize that still remains. Prayer, uh, his word, and the church. Again, I'm not just saying it's only these three. There are many other things that we can point to. And again, we talked about the characteristics of God that are unchanging. And uh, so thankfully, man, that I serve a God that changes not. But those are the things that's on my mind today that we can tap into, that we can participate. And I guess my my focus today is, is I, I sense the frustration. I, I sense the tiredness. Uh, of all the uncertainty. And I would just encourage you, uh, get up early, or maybe maybe you're a night owl, sort of like me, go out on a, an evening after the sun has set and uh, find the moon or maybe find the North Star. Uh, I was just remembering how for a millennial, I mean, for generations upon generations, millions of years, at least thousands, we would say, uh, 
men have been looking to that North Star uh, for that standard of direction, of guidance, thinking of a, a seafaring man, a man upon an ocean that has been rocked with storm and lightning and, and high waves and intensity, uh, but they can find that North Star and, and navigate to those safe arbors, amen, even through the night. And so I, I would encourage you, amen, to take some time and consider those things that, that remain. Because when there's storm and there's a lot of shifting and shaking and even fear uh, that is so prevalent in our world, uh, I think there is a calmness. I think there's a peace that comes when we realize there is that which, which we can stand upon, we can tie our hearts and lives to that remain. And the things that I would consider today, again, I know I'm being redundant, but uh, you, you can facilitate this. You can tap into these things. It's prayer, uh, it's his word, and it's the church. Constant, still here, still at work in the world today, still powerful, still accessible, still a part of the kingdom of God. It can still be facilitated and put into action. Those things that cannot be shaken. Amen. Tie your heart and soul to these. Amen. I want to encourage us again to a week of prayer and fasting. Amen. Uh, this week, praying for our nation. Amen. Praying for those in our uh, community that have been affected by uh, this pandemic, this virus. And uh, especially want to make mention of just praying for the church at large. Uh, things have changed. I, I get appeals every day, whether it be from missionaries or evangelists or pastors of small home mission works that are, that are struggling because many of them have been shut down for months and, and for some time just trying to find their way and navigate and to navigate wisely. Missionaries that can't deputize and go to churches trying to raise uh, their budgets to get back to their place of labor. Evangelists that are not having meetings. Uh, so I'm just wanting us to uh, join together and that God would give us wisdom and direction. Amen. And let's be prayerful uh, for the church and for the gifts of ministry uh, in the church. Amen. Spend some time in his word uh, this week. Uh, I will tell you that Lamentations could be uh, maybe uh, a book that seems not so much in a positive light. There's a lot of grief and sorrowing. Lamenting is, is grieving or sorrowing or weeping over something. And uh, no doubt it's Jeremiah that's penning these words as Jerusalem has been destroyed. Amen. Lamenting for the destruction of, of Jerusalem seems to be the theme. But it is poetic in style and nature. And, and just as joy and happiness is a part of our life, we have seasons and seasons, and to everything there's a season. And so there's times of lamenting. And so we find this, um, there is lamenting in other uh, books of the Bible. The, the Psalms has much lamenting, but the book of Lamentations in its entirety uh, is a book of grief and sorrow and heaviness, amen. And so... Uh, it's largely a book of, of, again, reflecting on what's been lost. But it does end with an appeal, amen, to, to God for restoration. Chapter 5, verse 1, remember, O Lord. And then verse 21, turn thou us unto thee, amen. In our time of loss and, and weeping and sorrow and heaviness, we know that God, uh, God is our answer, amen. Chapter 3, uh, 21 through 26, I'll just mention those. I'm not going to read those, but those are some of my favorite passages of this book to read there in the heart of, of the Lamentations. Again, chapter 3, uh, 21 through 26. So, amen. I encourage you, man, get to the word of the Lord, spend some time in prayer. And then it's back to church uh, Sunday, amen, the 18th. want to encourage you, spread the word, uh, call somebody. Please do that with us. Uh, I understand you might receive this information. I don't know who all will be tuning in uh, today or this week to Seeds. Uh, but if you get this information, call two or three people that you know that is a part of our local church body and just let them know. Get the word out. Again, we'll be, um, amen, promoting that and talking about that in other venues and ways. But you share the word that it's Back to Church Sunday on Sunday the 18th, October the 18th, 10 a.m. Amen. I want to close in prayer. I love each and every one of you so much, amen. As the wind blows and as the sun rises and as it sets, 
And as the moon takes over, amen, amen, and it's evening, amen, ritual of just giving us light, there are those things that remain that do not change. And today I would think, I would just ask you to consider, amen, it's prayer, uh, it's his word, and it's the church. I'm so thankful that I have those things that give me hope and comfort today uh, that I can stand upon, that I can believe, and that I can participate in. God bless you. Lord, we thank you today for the word of God. I thank you, Lord, for the church and your body. God, I thank you today for your spirit Lord, you are so real to us. And God, we thank you, God, for the call of the Spirit, the voice of the Spirit today. God, I pray that we would tune our ears, God, to your voice, God, in this hour. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And Lord, I believe it's so crucial that the church, God, and the bride of Christ be attentive, Lord, to what the Spirit is saying in this hour, in this perilous time that we live and God, a day where we're so inundated with so many other voices and sound bites, God, I pray that we would just tune our ear, O oh Lord, to the, the voice of heaven, God, to the word of the Lord, and let us be directed, God, I pray, by the Spirit. I pray, God, that you would minister, God, to every family, God, those that have been affected, Lord, by this pandemic, Lord, those that have been quarantined, and God, those that have even had sickness, I pray, God, that you would just minister healing, Minister healing, God, to our local congregation. Minister healing, Lord, to our, our community, Lord. And I pray, Lord, even over our nation and our world. God, I pray, Lord, this, this day, God, of an election year, that you, you would give us direction, God, as a people, Lord, as a nation. God, there's so much division, and so much strife. And God, variance, Lord, and just a, an attitude of, of division. I pray, God, that you would just... Let your perfect peace be upon our hearts. Lord, if there's not going to be peace in the world upon the earth, let us have peace in our homes and our, our families. I know, God, that even in the midst of the storm, God, you can speak peace, Lord. And God, in this place that we live, in this place that we dwell, God, in our emotion, our hearts, and our daily living, God, we can be at peace, Lord. And you can be God over all. I pray, Lord, that you would rule our hearts and minds. I pray, Lord, over every family, every individual, Lord, of, of harvest, God, that you would just show yourself strong, Lord. And God, we just declare your name today. We thank you. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be back in service and fellowship with the body. We're looking forward to that. God, direct us as a church in these days that we live, and we're going to give you the glory and the praise. Help us, I pray, Lord, to participate in prayer, God, to fall in love afresh and anew again with your word. And God, we're so thankful to be a part of your church. These things that remain upon the earth today, God, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And those things that can't, Lord, will remain. And that's what we hold on today. Two, that's what we stand upon today. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. Amen, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. We love each and every one of you. Our prayers are with you. Be praying for us. Uh, God will just direct us, amen, decisions that need to be made, amen, but the, the church is doing well, uh, it's going strong, it's not doing well as far as what we're used to, our reference points as far as coming together, uh, I know our kids are missing Sunday school, our youth are missing fellowship, there's a lot of things that have changed, uh, but I just want to make this uh, proclamation to you, uh, that the bride of Christ is alive and well in the world today, I sit down at lunch, amen, today. Actually broke my fast, amen, at lunchtime with a, a brother today. Uh, and he was talking about, amen, coming out of the hospital, getting checked, and he checked negative for COVID-19. Uh, but he just began to worship the Lord. And he was worshiping. He said tears began to roll down his cheeks. He, I guess he was a little emotional uh, at the good report. And somebody came out and said, why are you so sad? What's wrong with you? He said, man, I'm not sad. I'm I'm praising the Lord. I'm worshiping the Lord. Uh, I'm just, what I'm saying is, even though maybe we're not seeing each other worship and praise on Sunday in the pew, uh, the church is still alive and well in the world today. There's still a light and a witness that's going out. Love each and every one of you. God bless. Have a great evening in Jesus' name.